Hello, this is a Bluthner Upright Piano, 136 centimetres tall, made in about 1908. It's actually called a Style 4. Now, I haven't heard of a Bluthner Style 4 Upright Piano before. In fact, well, at least I haven't heard it called a Style 4, but on this invoice, the original invoice, it's called a Style 4 Upright Grand Piano 40 in Rosewood Case. So that's news to me, and maybe if you're in the trade, you already knew that. But you can see this original receipt, it's very beautiful. And you see the original price, £94.10. Uh, looking at the inflation calculator, that's about £14,000 today. As is typical with this age of Lutner upright and grand pianos, they have magnificent rosewood cases with beautiful figuring. We often fully repolish this, but this doesn't need doing, obviously. Um, and you see that front panel is, is delightful, and the top of the piano as well. Not that you see the top of the piano so much, but that's very good figuring too. This right-hand side is slightly more faded, and I'll polish your love to get to work on that and try to match it in as well as possible. But interesting to see the double candlesticks. You do get that on pianos sometimes, candelabra they're called, or sconces in the piano trade um, and I think they're original although uh, the finish on them is a bit unusual for being original of that age but uh, I think they probably are original. Now looking at this figuring here um, particularly stunning and of course you will see that and the, the music stands it's got two music stands as you often get on top quality German pianos there's the internal music stand. I've got a feeling that hasn't been used very much and it has a couple of uh, book holders on which you could do with having on the other one or you could put cat's clips on the other one. Oh, well, cat's clips are really useful. You can move them around. Um, not so good for us for younger children who might pull them off so you might want some proper book holders um, added to this stand here. It has a perfect, pretty perfect uh, ivory keyboard and None of them come off and being stuck back on again. There's slight discolouring on one or two, but really a very handsome ivory keys. There's plenty of legroom here if you're tall. It's six, about 64 centimetres from the floor. Normal 61 and a half is normal, and the pedals are very low. That's about 5.5. Normal will be seven. 5.5 um, centimetres from the floor. Normally, seven is normal on modern pianos. Now, interestingly, this is an overdamper. Uh, overstrung, in other words, the strings cross over, but this is an overdamper piano. It means the dampers are above the hammers. And Blutners, at the same age of piano as this, were making underdamper pianos as well. So uh, we made both overdamper and underdamper pianos. This is a 1905 Beckstein, um, and you can see the dampers are underneath the hammers. Uh, that's normal for a modern piano. Over dampers, there's quite a lot of older pianos are over dampers, but the dampers here are underneath, so they shut off uh, better, really, as we'll see. Now, at the base end of the over damper pianos, they're further down the string, they're quite weighted, and there's weights in here, so they do shut off reasonably well. If we compare that with this Beckstein Model 7, it's a little bit better, the damping. Back to the blute now. You can hear a slight echoey. Uh, uh. And if we listen to the middle section. And the back style. Now where it's most noticeable is this top section where the dampers are very close to the top of the string. So they haven't got much chance of damping at all. Let's listen to that. And you hear there, they're hardly damping at all. And the Beckstein, damping pretty perfectly. And the Blutner, That note particularly, you might be able to improve that just one or two of them, but uh, generally they're too near the top of the string to dampen well. So looked at from the side, you can see that the dampers are very, very close to the top of the string. And not surprising, 
you could try and get them a little bit lower than that, but there's not much space. Um, may improve them a little bit. I have had a uh, colleague who tr in the trade who, who tried changing all the felts, and unfortunately it made them worse, if anything. Where the piano really does score is in the tone. And this is the back style. That's such a rich, warm sound. The back style is a wonderful piano too, but there's something very special about the tone of Blutner's. Now, as it's a very tall piano, I did a comparison with the bottom string length, 1275 millimetres, and there's a boost of 4A grand, which is 1185, and that's 160 centimetres long. So, as the boost of 4A grand has shorter strings than the, the upright Blutner. Our two firms that continued making over dampers when others were making under dampers were Blutner and Ibark or Ibark, um, and both make very fine over damper actions. So if they're well adjusted, then uh, a delight to play. There's a bit of regulation to do here. The, the, there's a little bit of slack in the in the key. If you look at that, you can see the keys moving before the hammer, and as a result, the hammer's tending to double hit. So all we have to do is to take this screw down a little bit, and that'll cause it to th this to lift up, and then you might need to tighten this up. You might need to loosen this off to start with in order to, to take the other one up. So you just loosen that off a little bit, and then turn this one downwards, and that will take up the slack. You might need to take it out. It's easier if you take it out, really. I'm trying to do this one-handed with it in, and you might damage the screw. It's quite easy to damage that. So I've just taken it out, so as we turn this one down, and that'll take up the slack here, and uh, then it will work properly. So you've turned it too far, it's lifting off the rail, and you might find the jack doesn't go under properly. The jack here might not go under, so there's the jack, and that might not go under if it's lifting off the rail, so you need to take it back down again. And now it's not double hitting. In actual fact, we want to, the, the let off isn't quite as close as I'd like it to get, and I can't get it any better because the key dip isn't quite as great as it should be. The key dip's about one millimeter less than it should be. If we increase that key dip, then we can get the let off a bit closer as well. Now, one excellent design of Bluton reactions we've mentioned before is that when you pull the action forward, you don't have to take it right out. You can work on it because it, the end of the action rests on there. So that means the action can stay there and uh, it doesn't have to be taken out at all. Uh, so we can see behind here and we can work on it behind as well. You may want to take it out obviously if you're going to work on the whole action, but looking at the hammers, there's plenty of wear in them. Uh, either the piano hasn't been used very much or you can see the over dampers above the hammers there, or it might be that they've been replaced. It's quite hard to tell sometimes if the job's been done professionally by, by Bluton themselves. I think actually it just hasn't been played hugely. I think these are worn, not incredibly worn, a little bit of refacing and voicing, but generally they're in extremely good condition as the bass hammers. One or two of them are a bit, uh, have these hinges a bit loose, so something we do automatically is just tighten all those up, uh, the hammer butt screw there, and then see if the hinge is actually loose. And in fact, uh, when you try and wobble it, first of all you tighten this up and if it still wobbles then the hinge itself needs repinning. I don't think any of these need repinning, I haven't checked them all so that might not be completely correct but I think uh, it's just going to be a matter of tightening up the hammer butt screw. Sometimes this screw as well needs tightening. If it's dried out a lot this screw will need tightening up as well. On over dampers you sometimes you see tuning pins marked with chalk. It's not because that tuning pin's loose which is what we'd normally mark it uh, for as I've mentioned before, but it's, it's to locate C because it's actually quite difficult sometimes when it's an over damper and it's overstrung. Then you see that C there. If you look at my wedge here, I've wedged that in one of the strings on C, and uh, it's quite a bit a long way away from 
where it is. So it's quite useful to mark that, and then you can see that that is that's C, and that's the tuning pin for C, and then you can put your wedge in without any problem. So it's a Blutner overstrung overdamper, style four apparently, um, and made in about 1908. In every respect, the same as an underdamper, except that the damping around this area isn't so precise. Around here, it's quite acceptable, really. It's quite a lot of refinement work that we need to do. Taking up the lost motion will make a lot of difference to the touch. Also, the key dip is also quite low. I think we want to increase that. It's about nine millimeters on the whole and that will make it better to uh, more sensitive for the set off as well so just small things we need to do there and the weighting of the keys is a bit heavy there but generally not bad at all we could just regulate that slightly but plus or minus two grams is what we're used to i mentioned earlier the bass string length surprisingly is quite a lot longer than the blues the 4a which is a later piano that's a 1930s piano um, your base, bottom bass string is extremely long so really if you want a high quality upright you don't, can't do a lot better than this uh, but do bear in mind if it's an over damper you'll get slightly more echo than you would on, on an under damper It's a very mellow sounding piano um, if we voice and just slightly reface the hammers to make it a bit more even, it's a beautiful tone. The touch at the moment, and so we need to take up um, the slack and also, I think, increase the key dip a little, and that will just be perfect. Of course, the Bluton is a very fine piano. Very rich tone in the bass and very warm tone right throughout. And tremendously warm tenor. If you're interested in the piano and you can't visit us, please do write to us info at robertspianos.com and uh, maybe you can try the piano out for a while in your home and you can always change the piano for another one. We, as long as we are able to run the business, we want to provide the best service possible. So info at robertspianos.com. Thank you very much for listening.